What's going on guys? Good morning. Uh, I do have some stuff to show off here, so I'm just going to jump right into it. Um, those of you that have been watching the new beta website will see that I have been pushing some new nightly builds out. Um, that's thanks to the script that I wrote that actually publishes and modifies all the website information for me. It has now been fully updated to the new beta website. Um, Minus a couple bugs that were ha happening the first couple releases, uh, all that stuff's been straightened out now. So now every time I have a successful build here on my end, uh, to actually publish it to the site and update all the downloads and all that stuff is just a matter of uh, running a little command line uh, utility for me. So uh, that's really a requirement because it helps me to actually push these things out to you on a much more rapid basis, especially for the nightly build, which is important, uh, without having to actually go through all the manual trouble of uh, updating download links and uh, hash sizes and all that stuff that the, the download manager on our website needs. So anyways, recent updates. Um, you'll see I've been continuing to work on this toolbar control. Uh, which is this guy here, which is pretty much just a different view of the settings class that I've been telling you guys that I've been working on. Uh, so the toolbar control just takes the same settings and displays it in a different way. Um, part of that is I'm going to turn on my DualShock 4 here. I'll give that a second to initialize. Alright, here we go. So part of that is um, it's actually reaching into the device uh, source class now and determining if there are additional settings buried inside of there and providing a shortcut to them if there is. Uh, you see up here, uh, Xbox controllers really don't have any settings about them where you can change anything. Uh, whereas the DualShock 4 has some stuff buried in it. And so far, uh, what I've implemented is using the trackpad as a mouse and enabling the volume um, link between the, the system volume and the controller volume. Uh, meaning that, you know, previous versions of Input Mapper, this was independent of the system volume, meaning you had to control both. Um, now, if you change the system volume, it takes, uh, this will change as well and vice versa. So uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, mouse uh, trackpad mouse support. Uh, that's in its beta, but it seems to be working pretty cool. It's pretty straightforward. Um, I just have to tweak a couple uh, like uh, timers um, that helps you determine whether or not you're clicking and dragging or double clicking, uh, yada, yada, yada. So I'm just tweaking a few numbers in there to make it feel better. Um, and then where needed, I will be exposing values. Uh, there'll be a double click sensitive or click sensitivity uh, slider in here that determines uh, if you touch the pad and release, not necessarily pushing in the button part of it, um, but if you just touch it and release, um, how sensitive that is to determining whether or not that's a click or not. Uh, so stuff like that, uh, I'm working on it, uh, but it is f fully functional. Um, I don't know if the most recent build I have has that in it. I think it does. If not, I will just publish another one uh, at the end of this video because everything else seems to be stable. Um, the battery uh, indicator will now only show up if the device itself reports that it is a battery type device. Uh, so um, it doesn't really apply yet because uh, both of the controllers I have are battery devices and I don't think I have any USB only devices to test it out on uh, so but it should work um, seems to be working so far uh, profile selectors back in here in the front uh, one bug that I am working on right now is the monitor um, this is a feature I'm bringing back that allows people to directly view uh, device states seems to have some sort of a, a garbage collection bug or a memory overflow bug um, where it'll start backing up on garbage collects it won't happen in real time 
and even after you close this you won't get the actual data rate back for quite some time. Um, having a lower data rate while this is open is expected uh, because data rate um, actually tells you how fast the process each of these runs in a different thread. Uh, I'm sorry, not uh, not how fast the process, but how pa how fast the thread that this device is operating in is actually able to loop. Um, you see it's highly fluctuating and a lot lower when I have this window open because it's actually updating the data in this window. Uh, so that slows it down. Uh, we close this. Oop. And eventually this will bounce back after all the garbage collects are done. Um, but what really screws... Ah, everybody's sending me stuff right now. Go away. Uh, but if you go in here and you look at the input state, this will completely tank it out here. Um, things will start to get crazy here real quick. There you go. You see that drop down to almost nothing. Uh, even the program response is stuttering and jag, uh, jagged. Uh, but the thing is, even after I close out of this, uh, it's still going to take a while for it to rebound fully. If you look over here, all these yellow ticks are garbage collections. Um, and it's, well, actually, this one wasn't that bad. I didn't have the window open very long. But if you have the window open longer, um, it'll start to back up and it'll take it a while to get back to where it was. You see, I had a lot of CPU spikes even after that window's closed, and now it's starting to actually get back to normal. See, this is a more normal rate. Um, and mo the only reason because the only reason this garbage collection is happening is because the DualShock 4 thread uh, pings in the background like every, I think it's like three to five seconds to uh, look for new controllers. So uh, that's a bug. I'm not sure if it's a fixable bug. This monitor has always come with the caveat uh, that you should not try to do anything with it open. It's really only a diagnostic tool. Uh, so I don't know. I don't know if that's fixable or if I can't fix it, if I want to spend too much time on trying to fix it. Um, I'm just hoping that people uh, use this feature responsibly. Um, which I know is asking a lot for some people. I'm sure they will complain anyways, but uh, I'd rather include it for the people that know how to use it responsibly than to completely cut it off from everybody. So um, the same goes for this actual, uh, pretty much the same, same train of thought, this data rate graph. Um, I'm bringing it back because one, it does look cool. Uh, we've been over this before. Uh, I'd rather show it than, you know, hide it. Um, it can be useful in some circumstances, but I just hope people don't put too much meaning into it. Because uh, if you look at my DualShock 4 controller, you see this data rate, it looks pretty low, right? You might think something's wrong, uh, especially when you see how high it is to the Xbox 360 device. Um, but that is a completely invalid way of seeing how data rates work. Uh, this doesn't translate into latency. Um, this just says how fast it's processing inputs. And even though that looks low, if I pull this open, uh, this is a real world number. That says it, well, actually it just shut. <laughs> okay. Great timing. The device actually just shut off. But anyways, the last recorded input, uh, it was getting 132 um, packets per second. So your controller is updating 132 times a second. That's faster than your frame rate is probably even. So uh, the actual perceived um, latency or delay, it just doesn't exist. There is none, not at 132 times a second. Um, for there to actually be any perceived latency, I think you would have to get down into maybe like the, the 40 or 50 or maybe even 30 uh, packets per second. So. Um, in contrast, the uh, Xbox controller is getting like 300, which is just insane. And even that's lower now because now that I have this window open, this is sucking up some of the process. Um, but yeah, it's... Like I said, I just want to include a caveat in there that you can't really trust that. I might even put some sort of a, a note on this graph somewhere that it really doesn't mean jack shit. It just looks pretty. 
Um, let's see, what else we got here? Uh, a lot of everything I've been working on is the settings. Um, I mentioned online, force feedback is working both directions now. So if you have a DualShock device and you're emulating a 360 controller, you should get feedback. If you have a X input device and you're emulating a DualShock, you should get force feedback. Um, this also means that uh, PlayStation 4 remote play should fully work with this because uh, even if you're using a wired or a, or a Bluetooth uh, uh, PlayStation controller, uh, when you choose to emulate a PlayStation controller, it's actually emulating a wired controller, uh, which is what that uh, PS4 remote play app looks like. So you should be able to use a 360 controller uh, on remote play and pretty much uh, 360 controller, Bluetooth, DS4, anything like that should work on remote play. Um, I think that is about it. Uh, I don't have much else to show off. Um, as a matter of fact, while I'm here, uh, that was a release and it was solid. I might as well show off what I was talking about with this nightly build. Uh, so for me, every time I want to push something to the website now, it's as simple as double clicking this icon. Uh, and that packaged it all up and now it's uploading that package to the website. That should only take a minute or two depending on how our internet's acting today. Come on. Boy, I really miss having fiber optic internet. There we go. Now I get to enter in the changes. Let's see, this one I'm pretty sure the only major difference is So uh, it's one item per line, so I hit enter, and to end this uh, change log, I just hit enter again. And now it's actually updating all the download links and web articles on the website. Bam, complete. So now, So now it should have the new version that I just uploaded. There it is, mouse click and drag functionality added with the links and all that stuff. So um, that was just a little behind the scenes look again. Um, like I said, it really makes it so that I can push these out on a more regular basis uh, because without doing that to actually zip it, upload it, change all the links, um, the download manager likes to confirm a, a valid file by having a checksum size, so I have to figure that out. And it's it got to the point where the previous project, where it was just more of a pain in the butt for me to push updates uh, than it was really worth. But with this little script, I can push them out once a day, and it turns into a true nightly build for uh, people to test it out, which is really important in this stage because I need to make sure that um, it might work and run fine on my computer, but I want to make sure that it is uh, widely compatible with everybody else's. So uh, that's about it, guys. Uh, I want to thank you for your time. Um, keep checking out the new beta website and uh, do all the like and subscribe and bell and all that other crap. Or don't. I mean, whatever. We don't get money from YouTube anymore because they're assholes. Have a good one.